Hi guys, Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. This is going to be a guide for you to do the Easter egg on the darkest shore. To begin with, I highly recommend that you have people in your game running shell shock or camo. Either or are useful. If you're in solo, then probably shell shock. I think that that's an extremely useful ability to have here. And also, I recommend that you take in max ammos just in case you get low during your game. But if you don't have any, you should be fine as well. I really recommend the two mods, Lucky Crit and Specialist Training, because you'll charge your specialist meter faster, which is extremely useful throughout this entire Easter egg. And also, having Lucky Crit is just great for taking down boss zombies. One quick note before we start, check the description if you get stuck at any time because this egg was bugged on release and so it might get changed a little bit and as such, if you need further clarification or you get stuck, the description is the place to go. Or the comments section. To start this easter egg, you need to do a couple of basic things, such as turning on the main facility power, turning on the minecart power, and building the saw weapon, and then upgrading the saw weapon into the rip saw. As these are all fairly basic requirements of playing the map, I've included these in separate videos in links in the description down below, so you can check those out if you need them. However, assuming you know how to turn on the power and build the rip saw, we can jump into the first step. Get your ripsaw, walk over to the hanging man outside here, and shoot a disc at his neck to cut off his head, and then pick it up once it falls onto the floor. You're going to bring this head to the U-boat area of the map, and stick it on the corpse there that is chained to the wall, and you'll then be able to fill the two batteries next to it with souls. Now, be careful here, you want to make sure you've got a reasonable setup here, so maybe specialist meter, double tap, and an SMG, or something along those lines, and armor as well is really useful for it, because once we finish charging the batteries that are next to this dude that is chained up here, it's gonna lock us in the room, and by the way, if you're in co-op and some people get locked in, other people who are outside the enclosure can jump over the barrier to get into the area and help you out. So a lockdown sequence will start, you might get some heavy zombies, so beware, but the main thing to worry about here is the fire on the floor. Different patches of the floor are gonna ignite and start burning and then go out, and what you need to do is keep an eye on the three gas valves in the corner of the room that you're trapped in, and simply wait for the fire next to each of those valves to extinguish, so that you can stand next to them and hold square, or X if you're on Xbox, to turn the valve just like you'd be turning on the power in the final Reich. Really simple stuff here, just wait for the fire to extinguish in a particular corner, then once it does so, you've got a limited amount of time to hold square on the valve. Once you've turned all three, and this will take maybe a minute and a half, two minutes to do completely, you'll have finished the step, and a Brenner will spawn inside the little room with the corpse once you have opened the gate. You need to actually open it, and the guy will tear in two, but you'll then have a Brenner spawn, and if you shoot the gas tanks on its back, you should be able to kill it fairly easily. Now, at this point, you don't want to press the button that is going to become activatable in that little room that you've opened. Instead, you want to wait, hold your horses, go upstairs on the map, and enter one of the flak cannons that is newly available. These flat cannons can be used to shoot down planes, and there are going to be a series of strafing runs going on overhead, and you just need to, and your teammates need to, jump in the flat cannons and try and shoot down as many planes as you can. After, again, about a minute or so, it's not instant this by any means, you'll have shot down enough planes for the game to recognize that you've shot one down, and it'll let you know on your screen that you've successfully got that done. Once you've done it, go back down to the room that we just opened, which I'm going to here on call the Monk Room, okay, because we'll be using a Monk Head in there later, but go down there, and on the right-hand side, there's a button which you can press to call in an artillery carrier. After a couple of seconds, he will spawn in out of the pit below you, and he'll be carrying a bomb. What you need to do is escort him, and he's going to be quite weak, so watch out here. Be very careful in the escort. Bacon and eggs is great for this, by the way, if you need to stun zombies around him, and remember your shell shock, etc. as well. Jack in the boxes obviously work great too, but you need to escort him all the way up to the melee perk, the increased melee damage perk, which is by an AA gun at the top of the map, so he'll wind his way through the map here. There is a glitch in the game right now where he can fall through the floor sometimes, so be wary of that, but if it does happen, you can just go back to the button and press it, and if it's not letting you press it, you can just wait another round and then press it, but once you've successfully escorted him, he will put his little battery 
into the battery station next to the AA gun, and you'll then be able to start filling that with souls. The reason that we need to do this should become apparent in a moment, but first of all, I want to highlight two radio parts that you need to get here in order to proceed with the egg. The first radio part is really easy to find. It's located just on this corpse here in every single game when you're coming up the slope or you drop down between double tap and stamina up. It's going to be by the body. You just grab the part and it's done. The second is a little bit more involved. Once you've shot the planes down, you should be able to come to this cliff face here and see a plane wreckage. And if you shoot with your ripsaw at the hand of the, I guess, body that's hanging out of the wreckage here, it should drop a metal box. And that is another radio part that you can pick up. Once you've done all your plane stuff and you're on the AA gun charge step, you can go over to this table here and build your radio. And this is going to be something that we actually use throughout the rest of the Easter egg, so pay attention to this location. There'll be some audio that plays, and Straub will then say that he's sending in ships to attack the island. And these ships are going to artillery shell your entire island, so be very wary of this. They can kill you, they do do a fair amount of damage if they direct hit you, and it's just a bit of a pain, so what I recommend you do is only build the radio tower as soon as you're ready to start shooting down these ships with the AA gun that you've hopefully been charging by filling it with souls as I mentioned previously. If you need more shots for this, by the way, for what I'm about to explain, then you can just get more souls and keep trying. To do this bit, stand next to the AA gun and look out of the window there. You should see that there are maybe one or two ships out in the sea that you need to shoot down, and you can use the controls on the left and right hand side of that fire button in the center to get the gun into the right place, and then shell the ships. I recommend you turn on character subtitles, by the way. I really highly recommend this, actually, because it's really useful for the whole leg, but especially for this bit, because if you miss, your character might say, aim higher or aim lower, and uh, that's really useful because they basically are just telling you exactly how to do the step for you. Another tip for this is to stand directly under the AA gun, look up the barrel so that you're actually looking down the entire gun itself, and then move your crosshairs down, and you Use that to line yourself up with the ships to check if you are lined up correctly or not. Once you've destroyed all the ships, you'll get a notification on your screen and you're good to move on with the easter egg. This next bit involves the monk's head and a secret room, and you can do this earlier in your game by the way if you feel so inclined. We need to go down to the beach and then ride the minecart up to the top area of the map, or vice versa, go from that grub and green area down to the beach, which I believe is the strand. When you're going between them, on each new round you'll have bomber zombies spawn inside the minecart cart tunnel. You want to avoid killing any of them so they just blow up on you because you need a bomber zombie to blow open a wall on the side of the Minecraft route. If you're going from top to bottom, it's on your right. If you're going from bottom to top, it's on your left. And once this hole in the wall is blown open, you'll be able to enter a secret room every single time you go top to bottom or bottom to top with that minecart. So that's grabbin to strand or strand to grabbin simply by holding square on the hole. So every time you go past the hole, look at it and hold square and you'll get sucked inside. This is a secret chamber which we'll be using, again, throughout the rest of the easter egg. And if you go over to the far wall in here and look in the bottom right hand corner, you should see a monk's head hidden among the rocks. Grab that and take it back to what I previously said I would be calling the monk head room, or the monk room. It's the room that we opened up that contained the Brenner when we did the lockdown previously. The monk's head can be placed on the left hand side of this room and it will give you a riddle. There are three parts of the riddle and for this we're going to need a couple of different spines. However, to truly complete the riddles, we actually need to get some idols, which are the top right hand inventory slots, those three stone idols, which we're going to use to open the door in the secret room to get into another further room inside there. The three idols are fairly straightforward to acquire. The first of them can be grabbed by going to the flak gun, which is by the AA gun that we were using previously, and shooting the red rock directly in front of you, so aim as low as you can and shoot that rock. It should explode, and then if you run down to the beach, you should see the idol just sitting on the sand for you to grab, and you can then ride the minecart between the strand and the grub and like we did previously, enter that secret room and place the stone idol in the wall. That's one out of three. The second can be quite easily acquired by harvesting the spine of a regular zombie. You can harvest, by the way, with the ripsaw, in case you don't know, by kind of sprinting and trying to bayonet charge by meleeing as you do it, and you should go into a kind of frenzy and 
pull your saw up and charge the zombie, and then hold square once you start doing that heavy melee attack with it. So harvest a regular zombie and check if you've got a charged spine. It should be glowing red in front of you. It might take you a couple of regular zombies to get one that's actually charged, but once you do, bring the spine, and by the way, it's on a timer here. In the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see a red timer slowly depleting. That's the charge on the spine that's remaining. So in that time, before it expires, bring it to the bucket of heads just next to the monk head in the monk room, and you should see the spine disappear from your little inventory in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, and the machine will spawn a new regular zombie for you, who will run all the way through to the beach area of the map, so walk with it, and it'll go to the beach, maybe you want to protect it as well, it'll wade into the water, and then it will return carrying a second stone idol. Once it returns and drops the idol, grab the idol and do what we did before, simply hop on the minecart, go to the secret room and place it in the wall. The third stone idol is definitely the trickiest, and this is 100% going to be the most nonsense heavy part of this guide, I suppose, because it's really hard to spot sometimes, okay? So what essentially is going to happen here is around the map, there are going to be several rocks sticking out of the cliff faces that look a little bit suspicious. They'll be their own little rock kind of glued on just a little bit of red rock attached to the cliff face and what you need to do is go around and shoot those red rocks with your rip saw and try and destroy them with it if you successfully destroy them it will explode it'll disappear that little red blob will no longer be attached to the cliff face and once you've done it enough times you'll get lucky and the idol will drop out of what was previously that little blobby rock onto the floor for you to pick up You'll probably have to do multiple of these in your game, so there are a few spawns that I know and I will show you these now, but I'll also have a list of these in the description down below and I'll be providing further help in the comments in case you do get stuck on this, but there's a good chance you have to shoot sort of three, four, five rocks in one game in order to find your spawn. Here's a clip of me shooting three possible spawns, so we're starting off with the misty kind of cliff face here. If you then shoot that and it's not there, go under the little walkway and there's another on the cliff face on the other side. If that still doesn't work, you can go further still along the cliff and shoot another one of the rocks. There can also be a spawn by the Pack-a-Punch if you're at PAP and you look up. Actually, it's probably a bit easier if you go towards Double Tap for this, but you look towards the cliff face there, there should be a little tuft sticking out that you can shoot. You might get your idol there. You could also get your idol if you're at the Flak Gun by Double Tap or between Double Tap and Stamina Up. If you stand by that, you should be able to look towards the slope going down towards the lower areas of the map and see some pylons in front of you, and you should see a rock sticking out somewhere there between the pylons that you want to shoot. I believe there are also locations along the cliff face where I was talking about before, here, here, and here. Like I said, more spawns in the description. Once you get your idol and you chuck it in the stone wall, a cavity inside will open and you'll find three of the heavy, I don't know how to pronounce their name zombies, which I'm going to refer to as mutants, because why the hell not? So you'll find three mutants praying, and this is a quite good opportunity to try and harvest one of their spines. We're going to need several spines for the rest of this easter egg, so getting one of their spines now is really good. It just saves us having to wait for a fog round later in our game in order to get a mutant spine. If you're unsuccessful though, that's fine. Just kill them off and you can leave and you'll be fine. If you're successful in grabbing one of the spines, go back to the monk and place the spine in the bucket just like we did previously with the regular zombie spine. Oh, and by the way, a quick note here, obviously it needs to be a charged spine, it can't just be a regular spine. Once we place it in the bucket, a mutant is going to be brought out of the pit just like the regular zombie before, and this is going to trigger a fog round, okay? So what's going to happen is it'll go foggy, and you need to be really careful here and listen out with your teammates to any kind of screaming sounds that you can hear around the map. The reason for this is that there's basically going to be a mutant that is our friend getting attacked by other mutants, zombies, and wusslers, and you need to protect it. So for this, I personally use the bacon and eggs pretty much always because I love the bacon and eggs for this step. They make it really easy to do. Run around the map listening out for the screams. Once you hear some screams, run towards them, and then you should see your mutant crouch down, potentially being attacked, or you might get there so soon that there are no other zombies attacking it at that point. If so, that's great. You've beaten the game essentially to it, and all you need to do is spray your bacon and eggs at your friendly mutant, and it should basically stand up, wail a little bit, and then run off and spawn somewhere else. You need to do this maybe four or five times, and then the step will be complete. The 
monk will talk to you. That's the monk head that we previously placed down in the monk room. And you'll then be able to continue with your sacrifice, which I'll talk about in a moment. But first, I want to quickly mention some spawns for this, okay? So, common locations that I've seen this guy are down by the whale in the beach area, up by the AA gun in the AA gun area, I suppose. And he can also be by the pack-a-punch just to the left of it as well. There are a couple of other spawns, but those are three really common ones that I recommend you always check in your game. Sometimes it'll sound like he's on the beach and he's actually by the AA gun and vice versa. So that's a little pro tip to check out. Once you've done that four or five times and the monk has talked to you, you'll be able to complete your sacrifice by going back to the secret room. Once you enter, and that's all of your team going in the room, by the way, you need to head up to that stone statue in the middle of the room. A lockdown will begin, so the door will close behind you, and your job is going to be to kill the sacrifice that you have just brought in here. So it should be glowing purple or something, and that will distinguish it from the rest of the other zombies and whistlers, etc. But lay as much damage into it as you possibly can, potentially dropping a shell shock to stun all the zombies around you while you do this. And once you kill it, it will drop its head, which you can go over to, hold square, it should give you a little hint string, and the head will then end up in one of the fishing hooks that are hanging over the area that you are in. Once that's done, survive a little bit longer and then the door will roll back open and you'll be able to leave and do your next sacrifice. One out of three riddles solved. By the way, you can do these riddles in any order. In fact, we've just done the third one first, just for the sake of convenience. The next one I'm going to show you is the pest ritual. To do this, get a pest spine, make sure it's charged and give it to the bucket just like we did before. A pest will come up, and for this you're going to need the ripsaw, and you'll also need to open all of the charged fuses around the map. They're in little kind of containers that look like this. If you're in the U-boat room, for example, facing the monk room, if you look to your right, there should be a pillar with one of them on, and once you grenade it, get a direct hit with your grenade on the actual box itself. It should blast open to reveal some purple fuses. There's another one right by the facility power switch, which is yellow fuses. There's one on the entry to bunker three. There's another two or three up top by the AA gun. I'll point them out as we go along. Switching focus back to the pest real quick, you'll see that it's running in a specific route. And what you want to do is wait for it to stand where I'm standing right now. It will then run just along here to a second location. And you want to bounce your ripsaw off the blue fuses that I'm shooting here and into the pest. They should hit it, shock it, and the pest's root will then change. As you can see here on the other side of the room, I've got some blue fuses open and accessible. Make sure that you've opened that as well. For the next location, the pest needs to be running from the kind of corner, I suppose, back down the walkway towards the monk room, and you want to shoot the yellow fuses that are raised up a little bit. It should bounce around and then come down and hit the pest when it's in the center of the walkway there, and that's your second one complete. Then, once you've made sure that you've opened the fuse box above the bunker 3 entrance, you want to stand above the bunker 3 entrance, in fact, and when the pest is under the cliff kind of walkway there, the little opening, you're going to want to shoot the fuses I'm shooting here, and you'll see it ricochet around and hit the pest, and this one can be a little fiddly sometimes to get the timing right of, so give it a couple goes if you need to. Next, we're going to be heading up to the flak gun area of the map, the AA gun area, in fact, and there are three boxes we need to open here. This one, this one, and this one. And once we've done that, we want to run right next to the flat gun here and stand in this little corner that I'm standing in. You need to shoot the fuses I'm shooting here just as it's coming out of the bunk bedroom because it'll then be standing in the doorway of that bunker. And if you shoot the fuses I'm shooting, it will bounce around and hit it right in the doorway. You'll then end up back in the original room that you were in, the U-boat room. And this one is a little fiddly to get right, but do exactly as I'm doing here and you should be okay, okay? The pest is going to have a little bit of an eccentric route, you need to make sure you've opened up the fuses by the power switch and then come and align yourself in the little nook that I'm standing in here next to the saw blade table. My method of doing this is as soon as I see the pest come back and cross this line, I'm going to turn, line up and shoot exactly as I'm shooting onto the fuses here with my ripsaw. The reason for this is that this one has to be timed pretty well, and we want to kill the pest when it's between two of its little locations, which ends up, by the way, being right by the trap. So what I do is I wait for it to cross this line, I aim at the fuse, I shoot, and if you need a teammate to help you out with this, then obviously enlist one. If you don't have a teammate, then just keep giving it a couple of goes and shoot a couple of ripsaws, maybe give yourself a max ammo from a consumable if you need one. 
but you should be fine here. You'll shoot your ripsaw, it'll bounce into the pest, and then the monk head will talk to you, and just like before, you'll be able to do another sacrifice in the secret room. The lockdown will start, you'll need to kill the glowing pest in the middle. Once you kill it, there'll be another head on the floor for you to hold square on. That will then transport it once again to the fish hooks above you. That's two out of three heads, congratulations. And we can now go and do the final one, which is a little bit buggy right now, but Sledgehammer are working on making this a little bit easier for us, so don't worry, but I'm gonna explain it super duper clearly by showing you the entire route that you need to go with a whistler. Okay, so get a whistler spine, go drop the whistler spine in the bucket like before, a whistler will spawn, and this one's gonna follow you wherever you walk. So if you're near it, it's gonna basically sniff you, I suppose, and walk towards you. You need to lead it along a very specific route in order to pick up a very specific order of perks, okay? And this step glitches out right now because sometimes the whistler gets stuck and he just stands there and you need to let the zombies kill him. Other times he just dies randomly. It's a bit of a funky step, but if you follow this route and he doesn't glitch out for you, you'll be A-OK -okay and the step will work just fine, okay? The perk order that you want is double tap, melee, stamina up, quick revive, okay? So we need to lead the whistler out of the room that he spawns in and take a left as soon as we go up the stairs. Be very careful not to get speed cola. If you take a right, you'll have messed up the order right away and you'll basically be doomed to have to fill the whistler with other perks and then just have him killed off. Taking a left when we go out the room, we can navigate our way through to double tap, being very, very careful as we go. Make sure you avoid electric cherry, etc. as well. Once we've grabbed double tap, you need to slide him down this little slope here so that he then avoids stamina up. You don't want stamina up just yet, okay, so hug the wall and walk him all the way along to the melee perk in the bunker. Once you've grabbed that, and this one can be a little glitchy by the way, so if you get stuck there, you're not alone, many people have had that happen to them, so fear not, just try again. But once you've got the melee perk, you'll have got double tap and melee, so that's two purples. You then need to go back through to stamina up. And by the way, a tip for this, to make sure that it's actually working, you can see the perk colors on his back lighting up from bottom to top as he goes around and collects them, okay? So you'll have the two purples here, go grab stamina up. That's gonna give you a third perk, which is red. And you'll then start walking faster because he's got stamina up now. It's crazy, right? And the final one that you need is Quick Revive, so walk him all the way there, get him to grab the Quick Revive perk, and once he does so, assuming the step hasn't glitched out and your order is fine, and if you do get stuck with this, by the way, there'll be more help in the comments down below and the description, just like always, but once you've done it correctly, he will run into the crack in the waterfall and disappear. And then, guess what? It's time for another lockdown in the secret room. So head over there, once all your team are inside, the door will close, lockdown will start, kill the whistler with all the perks on his back, and for good measure, kill all the other whistlers as well, hold square on the head that drops after you've killed it, and you'll then have three heads on fish hooks. You then can go back to your monk friend, pick up the monk's head, return to the challenge room, place the monk's head on one of the fish hooks, and start another lockdown sequence in which the stone statue starts crying blood. You have to fill the basin in the center of the room with blood, and eventually at the end of it, the statue will grant you the pommel of Barbarossa which gets you a trophy. So congratulations if you've done that. There's a challenge to get this in like 35 minutes, I think, or something. It's really speedy, but this is only the beginning, okay? We haven't done the boss fight yet, so we're not quite done. The pommel replaces your jack-in-the-boxes, if you've got any, and is actually really useful for the boss fight because it's gonna stun the mutant zombies. Once you throw it, there'll be a kind of shockwave when it lands, and then there'll be a second shockwave a couple of seconds after. And then after maybe 15 seconds or so, it will recharge in your inventory and you'll be able to throw it again. Once you've all grabbed the pommel, and I really do recommend that you all grab the pommel, Jack in the Boxes just aren't particularly useful for this in my opinion, go to the radio that you built before and throw the pommel at it. This will activate the radio, and then, before touching the radio, please, please, please be careful here, before touching the radio, make sure you're ready for the boss fight, because the radio is just going to transport you in, so you're going to probably want to get to a pest round or something, end the pest round so that you get the max and then go in. I recommend for this full armor. I also recommend that you kind of game the system here and are careful in the order in which you buy perks in your game. In my opinion, throughout your game, you should buy perks in the following order. Speed Cola, Quick Revive, Stamina Up, Double Tap. 
The reason for this is that if you go down, you will lose them in that same order. You'll lose those perks as Speed Cola first, then Quick Revive, then Stamina Up, then Double Tap. And we want to keep Double Tap most importantly, so that's why we're buying that one last. And Speed Cola we can actually get back mid-boss fight, so that's the one that we're going to get first. I also obviously recommend upgrading your Ripsaw if you feel so inclined, although you probably won't use it during the fight at all. I think that Pack-a-Punching is a great idea. I highly recommend the SVT Pack-a-Punch. That thing is beastly. Also, Bacon and Eggs is great just for getting yourself out of tight situations, and it's just generally a good pair of guns to have. Once you're fully ready to get started, though, go and hold square on that radio, and you'll be transported to the boss fight. There are a couple of stages to this. You'll start off in the beach area of the map. There'll be a glowing mutant zombie that you need to chuck your pommels at and try and kill. There will be other mutants around as well, there'll be whistlers, etc. So make sure you're using your shell shocks here, make sure you're camoing if you need to. Try and lay as much damage into that mutant zombie that's glowing as you possibly can and just essentially kill everything, okay? Once you've done enough damage to that glowing mutant zombie, the one with the charge on it, then you've chucked your pommel at it enough times, it will die, the fog in the area will clear, you'll be able to wipe out the rest of the zombies, you should get a max ammo, and you'll be able to buy Quick Revive if you need as well, by the way, of course, but you'll then be able to jump on the minecart and head to the next area. Don't worry about changing the location, just jump on the minecart, you'll go to, I think, the U-boat pens or the top area of the map, but for us it was the U-boat pens second. This area is really quite spooky because the floor on here can be on fire, so be very, very careful of that. Make sure again to be using those shell shocks, etc. Kill the mutant zombie once again, that's your absolute priority here. And once you've done so, again, it will clear. You'll, by the way, be able to go up the stairs and grab yourself speed cola if you need to during this, but be very careful not to get trapped up there, of course. Once you've done it, it will clear, and you'll be able to go on the minecart again. You'll go to the top area of the map where it's hella foggy, and again, same deal will happen. Mutant zombie, it'll be glowing. Really try your darndest to get as many pommel hits on it to stun it, and headshots, etc. All those things that you need to be doing in order to kill a mutant zombie regularly. If you see your teammates in trouble, use the pommels on them. Like, really try and watch each other's backs here, and you should then kill the mutant zombie, and it will actually seem to die a little bit more for this time, but you're not done yet. Hop back on the minecart and again, get some perks if you need to here, but then go back on the minecart, go back down to that beach area of the map, and lo and behold, you should see that there's a whole bunch of zombies waiting for you, and this bit is chaotic as hell. There's going to be a bunch of mutant zombies, you need to really focus on trying to kill as many of them as you can, and eventually, you might see that glowing mutant zombie pop up once again, lay as much damage into it as you possibly can, while avoiding all the whistlers and all sorts, and the discs that are getting fired at you by the mutant zombies and all sorts, and eventually, with enough craftiness and navigation of all the bad guys in front of you, you should be able to kill the mutant zombie that you've been targeting this whole time, it will die, it will pop up on your screen, and about 10 seconds later, you'll be transported into the outro cutscene. If you manage it, congratulations, you've just completed the easter egg in the darkest shore. This has been a no-nonsense guide from your boy, Mr. Ruffle Waffles. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing as well. I put a huge amount of time into these guides to make sure they are as clear as possible. I strive to be the clearest on YouTube. That's my goal always. And so if you appreciate that, then hopefully you'll join the team and subscribe and I'll see you around in future guides, okay? So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching, guides. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.